Today's guest and martial arts journeyman is Aaron Cohen, a Hollywood tech advisor and trainer for movies, including training Keanu Reeves for John Wick. Served as part of Israeli commando unit, operating undercover inside Hamas territory, infiltrating terrorist cells. 15 years of experience bodyguarding Hollywood's elite, including Brad Pitt and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Trained SWAT teams across the US in active shooter and counter-terrorist response. Co-starred with Channing Tatum, Nick Cage, and Sylvester Stallone. 35 years of experience in martial arts and tactical weapons. Holds multiple Dan ranks, including Aikido, Aikijutsu, and Krav Maga. So you're getting punched and kicked, and your hands are behind your head, and you're literally learning how to beat your fear by getting licked and wailed. The purpose of that is to make it so that you realize you're not going to get killed. So it's, you learn how to take Ukemi, but it's like Ukemi that I'm not talking about just getting dumped on your head. I'm talking about like, imagine you have to run through your entire team of 30 guys. And if you're not crashing through them hard enough in the middle of the gymnasium floor, and the purpose of that is to get to the terrorist before he can detonate a bomb. So this is all this mindset conditioning. So that's part of it. Then the other part of it is aggressiveness training and literally called aggressive youth. I don't know how they say it in Lithuanian, but literally aggressive youth, which is if you're not fighting hard enough in your fights, you're on your knuckles, they stop the fight and you'll stay on your knuckles and you'll do pushups until you get up and decide to go harder. That whole method, which I think is the biggest piece missing in every martial arts school, is the mental conditioning. How mm -hmm. you train the art is going to inform how you perform on the street, but it also means that you have to have the fear broken. And you can't really do that in civilian schools because of the liability. In, in the military, it's like, what are you going to do, sue them? No, you're going to go to military prison if you... <laughs> If you, if, you, if you resist, you know what I mean? And you'll get kicked out of the unit. And everybody, you know, you want to be in the unit and get through the pipeline and go on missions. And that's the fun part. So the training in the unit was absolutely fucking brutal. To this day, I talk about it. If I saw my crowd McGon instructor, I would run. If I saw him across the street, I would run. Like, I never broke distance with him. So he had left to go to become an officer while I was still in the pipeline. So I never, like usually at the end, when you're done with a course, you break distance, you shake, you hug, and you move on to the next course. If I saw him today, I would, I would run, take off across the street because he was a killer. So uh, Krav Maga uh, was a big part of my diet for my truth serum. And, and I know what works and what doesn't work. And when you go hands-on, you're on operations, you know what works and what doesn't work very quickly. And you're not doing a Rimi Nagis and Ten Khans and Kota Gayash and Shihon like it's not. No, you're with a rifle. Your strikes are very basic, but it's aggressiveness. And you've already had your fear broken. And this takes a year. And, you know, you don't turn that off once that's turned on. So um, uh, after the military, I was turned off martial arts, like in a huge way, man. I went into the bodyguard business. And uh, as you mentioned in the bio, uh, owned in a bodyguard company and ran a really successful body company for about 15 and uh, to, be, to go into acting uh, full time. And uh, so only recently in the last five years have I started going back into true martial arts. But let me, let me like make this really clear. I only train in martial arts today for entertainment. Let me just caveat that. Everything I do in the, my martial arts journey is to look good on camera. I'm not seeking truth. Um, I know how to handle myself. I, also work part-time in law enforcement. I have a, I carry a firearm. I only carry when I'm with my family and, and I'm at a movie. You've seen what's going on in America. It's cuckoo balls right now. You know what I mean? And by the way, so is Europe with all the terror in the last two years. And you guys don't have guns. You don't have the same rights that we do here. So you have more knife attacks. You have, you know, different kinds of assaults and different kinds of murders. Um, but my journey is purely aesthetic. All I'm interested in is what looks fucking awesome on camera. So went back to Aikido. Um, I'm, I'm uh, ranked in Aiki Jiu Jitsu and uh, very similar to the Aikido. Just started hybriding my own style of strikes into it that looked good. And so everything I've do, just been doing has been for film. And I've had the time of my life, but I couldn't train. But why am I bringing this up? Because I feel like you're burnt out. I feel like you're burnt out. And the reason why is how long did you train in keto? Fifteen years actively. It's a long 18. time, bro. Oh, no, it's yeah. a long time. And then you train, and then you went into MMA a little more. And I started off with Haywire, by the way, training Gina Carano, mixed martial arts star. She was the face of female MMA. 
I was her first tech advisor. I was her first tactical trainer. I taught all the weapons for Haywire. Um, I think you guys can see it. I think it's still on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, Channing Tatum, before he broke out in, in Magic Mike, you know, swinging around on the stripper pole mm -hmm. and doing all that bullshit. He was in Haywire. I was there when they pitched Magic Mike. I heard it at dinner. It was, it was, it was another funny story. But um, so Gina was my first movie. And as I started breaking into film more and more, I started going, you know what, man? It's time to start re-exploring this martial arts journey, which is why I love the title of your show. <laughs> and it's been fun. It's been fun because I don't, like, I take it really seriously. I'm doing a workup for a film right now, and I'm training, like, real because I'm training, like, eight hours a day, man. And the problem is I can't do a keto. We don't have ukis right now with COVID. You can't work out with anyone. I can't pull any stunt guys. Just started adding Kempo, which I fucking, have you seen Kempo? Looks incredible. Started adding Kempo and hand strikes and all this stuff. And so um, the martial arts journey, to answer the question, to close this, is to come full circle. And uh, I'm really, really enjoying it. And so it's a process to get back to it after you've burnt down on it. But it's also a decision that you'll make if you feel that there's value added going back to it, if that makes sense. And, you know, you might be years away from that. So, um, mm -hmm. but let's go back to your questions. I hope I was able to cover them i try and get them to like a blue belt level in my hybrid which is krav some arnis some aikido some kempo i'm adding kempo right now let me plug this is my kempo guy um if you guys love kempo like i do i just think it looks great um online training works as long as you have a certain level of training but it doesn't work for aikido you need a new yeah. kit but it works for the striking arts. So I'm working with a Kempo coach, Rokas, right now, online. I'm a fucking blue belt training in American style Kempo with an awesome guy who's got a great online program. He's out of Texas. His name is Joey Cadena. And he is a physical fitness doctor. He's got a PhD or he's an MD and he does medical therapy for injured athletes and has an awesome online program. And I believe it's, um, Universal Kempo Karate Studio. So if you guys are looking to do like a cool karate system where you love Kempo, because I think it looks fucking awesome, Universal Kempo Karate Studios online. This guy's the shit. I fucking, but you know why I love him, Rokas? Because there's no ego. <laughs> he knows who I am. He knows my background. He knows I have multiple black belts. He knows that I've got multiple teaching licenses and that I'm a firearms instructor. And he's like, dude, let's just get you to where you want to go. Tell me what your expectations are and let's get there together. And he just sends me fucking 40 hours of videos and I'm in my backyard in my dojo working it out and then I'll put it up and I'll test it, and, but it works. So I'm adding that to my fight choreography repertoire and to bring it back to your question, I'm only interested in playing to the actor's strength. So as far as the, the combination of real looking versus fantasy looking, it just depends. Everything is I, it's I hard, agree. right? Uh, it's hard. It's and my, you know, my coach is like he's he he really knows the details and he's sometimes asking a lot, but I love it. Like I'm like, yeah, give me more. It's like, just tell me what, tell me what I'm so doing there's, wrong. There's a movie that I'm about to shoot in Vancouver, Canada, with a kickboxing world champion turned actor, uh, hmm. who Joe Rogan has talked about on his podcast, hmm. and Google Jerry Trimble. Okay. Um. And pull him up real quick. I don't know if you can throw him on. But Jerry Trimble is uh, a former kickboxing champion who had the nastiest spinning hook back kick. And I just want to give Jerry a plug. Love you, buddy. Can't wait to get on set with you. And uh, uh, him and I actually have a sword fight in this up and coming movie, which I'm excited about. And uh, But you can see his highlight reel. <laughs> He's a fucking killer with his feet, man. Nice. Tell me if you got him there. But uh, Jerry Trimble. Anyways, yeah. I think the kickboxing is awesome too. And good for you, bro, because the true warrior path, bro, it's not about the don't don't go off and try and find the best instructor. He ain't out there, bro. It's not about <laughs> the best. Hey, bro, it's not about the best style. There, there is no style that has the corner. And any style that thinks they have the corner is usually knocked out in the corner. Mm. It's about finding your own pieces that work and forging your own fucking sword, bro. And you, it's going to be an amazing journey where it lands you. And the best part about it is who are going to start to help and open doors for you as you grow with them. You feel me? Yeah. It's like, dude, everything you went through was for a reason. 
Mm. Love that shit. You know mm. what I mean? You should be saying thank you, Unogashimas, to your old asshole sensei. Because <laughs> without him, bro, we wouldn't be here. Us? True. True. Well, yeah. Well, first of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for you know the the kind words, and I'm thinking. I mean it, dude. I mean it. I'm thinking about everything you said, and and you know you told it about your burnout and then how you kind of rediscovered martial arts. And I, I think I, I'm maybe somewhere at, at the beginning of a similar journey. Where I believe so too. I believe that too, yep. Where beforehand I was just pushing myself so hard. I was trying to prove things and, and, and then I got burned out. But these days I'm like, like you mentioned, you rediscovered martial arts just in that aesthetic way of like, let's do what's fun. Let's do what's for works for movies. And I think beforehand, I was always like, I have to always like be the best, train as the best, et cetera. And now well, you're like, broke you're competitive. You have a type A personality. Oh, absolutely. My, my Look friend. His body language. Look at his body language. My friend here says. I'm trained, I'm trained in Israel, bro. I can read it all. <laughs> I, I, but uh, but okay. you, hey, that's a good, that's a good, uh, that competitive spirit is really important. That's part of that warrior stuff. It's in there. You need that. Yeah. Because yeah, there's sharks out there, bro, and you're swimming with them, so you need that edge. Right. I think, yeah, I think, like, I, I like I like being a type A. I think you're right. spot on. My my friend says I'm triple A. <laughs> you know, I'm, for I, sure. I, for sure. I'm sure. You know how that feels as well. I, I have a feeling. But anyway, so I think, yeah, it's just about balance. And before I didn't have it, I was just, like, always A. I, I never went B, per se. And these days, I'm like, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to have fun. It's like, I don't have to always do martial arts just to be the best. It's like, I can just have fun, meet friends, share my stories. Like, I don't have to be like, always like Batman. You know? <laughs> yes. Hey bro, people ask me, why do you work in movies? Cause it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's worth all the shit that you get. It's worth all the fucking competition. It's worth the animal. Like, Bro, we're supposed to have fun in this life. Look at what we're doing right now. We're sitting on YouTube. You're getting paid. You're going to get ad payment for this video <laughs> when it seeds on YouTube, which is going to pay your rent and your cell phone. And we're having fun. That's the point. We're yeah. supposed to have fun. Nobody wants to go get a real job. That sucks. Right? Mm, yeah. I don't want to flip burgers. Yeah. That kind of uh, almost brings me to an interesting question to ask yeah. you for getting to know you better. I think that that's an interesting point to, to get to know your mind on. So you had this super successful security company. Uh, you sold it. I, I would bet for a good amount of money. I would almost bet, and you don't have to say this, but that you probably don't have to work for the rest of your life. That would be my guess. But you're doing movies. You're teaching people. So how, how did that come about? Like, how did that? Like, so, okay. Yeah, God, you're, you're a sharp dude, man. So that was the second burnout. There were two oh. burnouts. So I started the bodyguard business after working as a bodyguard for a couple of years. And I was like, I can do this, man. I can hustle on my own. I can get my own fucking clients. And I did. And um, I've been on Access Hollywood. I've been on TMZ. I'm on Hulu in the new Britney Spears documentary. You can see me running around with her. I did it for 15 years and I got tired of being a guard dog. And mm. I was, and I, listen, I did a lot of theater and drama when I was in high school. I always loved acting. I did a lot of theater and drama in my unit in Israel because there's a lot of acting involved. Mm -hmm. As one of my talents, and not everybody does that in my unit. And um, I, after being in the bodyguard business for so many years, and I made a great living at it. I had a good time. I traveled the world. I worked. In, I worked in some pretty dangerous countries too. So I did some military contracting on the side through my company as well, training foreign units, which can be really sketchy when you're overseas with limited logistics and limited supplies, and but you know, good money, but just dangerous. And I, and I started burning out. And the reason why is because there's only so many red carpets I would stand on behind an actor until I would start going, you know what? I'm getting tired of standing behind the actor. I want someone standing behind me. And so I'm ambitious like you. Hmm. And as I was protecting actors and singers and artists for all these years, I just kept going, you know, I, listen, I know what I'm doing is important. And I know that I'm providing an important function. And I never worked first. And you can see me, uh, if you Google me and uh, uh, Kim Kardashian after she was robbed, you'll see some stuff on Google on there. And I won't get into the details of it. I won't say yes or no whether I protected her, but I will say that there's some stuff online about me and Killer Kardashian, yeah, which you can go look up. Um, <laughs> I neither deny nor admit that I worked with them, but I will say that I got to a point where 
I was just like, dude, you could be macking it just as hard as any of these people. They're not more talented than you. They're not mm -hmm. smarter than you. They're not more driven than you. I've always loved films. Like, bro, why don't you go bigger? That's what I was saying to myself. Aaron, why aren't you going bigger? Aim bigger. And so I started aiming bigger. And it's been working. And the reason why is because just like, like when I got out of the <laughs> – you can't go to the Israeli army. I went to the Israeli army. You're not getting into the special forces. Yeah, special forces. You can't start a bodyguard company. Start a bodyguard company. You can't be successful at a bodyguard company. You were never in the. I run. Well, I own one of the biggest bodyguarding companies in Hollywood. Um, you can't work in film. Yeah. yeah. Three, I'm, I'm nine movies in, man. I got a move. I got two more films coming up. One of them I'm co-starring in. Um, everybody's gonna tell you no. I love it. Tell me no. You know, I'm <laughs> and I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep driving through you. Like in the crop, my gospel, I'm going to smash through you. And you're going to do the same. And wherever you, whatever you believe right, is true. If you believe you can or you can, it's true. Yeah. And I'm a big, big believer of self-improvement. And it's a little crazy with all these online influencers now. And everybody's a fucking expert and trying to get you to this. And that. But I really think it's important to live in a positive frame. It's important to... Be a yes, can do person. It's important to keep the haters away from you. It's important to push the negativity back. Don't read the comments, or if you can, if you can handle them, then read them. But most of the world can't go after what they want because they don't believe they deserve it. I believe I deserve everything that I go after, and the reason why is because fuck you, I'm going to go get it. And I'm not saying don't be humble. I'll still be humble. Yeah. However. Everybody deserves to have what they want. But the difference between those who get to be on set and get to act in films is because they pulled the trigger and went for it. It's, it's 99, you know, it's 99% just do it. You'll figure it out later. You'll get better at it as you go. You know what I mean? Like you don't know where this journey is going to take you, bro, but it's awesome to go through it, right? Most people aren't going to have as much success and have 30 million combined, combined views and 150,000 followers and because they never, they don't believe they can do it. They don't think they'll do a good job. But your mm -hmm. type A personality is what's brought us here. Because we're both alpha crazy people. And it's that crazy that you want. So to answer the question, and I know I keep dancing, I, I, I sold the company because I could do more. I have more in me to do bigger things. And mm -hmm. being a guard dog for a celebrity isn't really an accomplishment. I protected people that I that needed protective services, and I'm very proud of what I did. But I'm more proud of building the brand than mm. I am of the actual bodyguarding part. I'm more proud that I got the phone calls and that I was in the lexicon of a reliable bodyguard company that's mm. well-trained and well-staffed and had a good track record. And I was just as proud to get rid of it. And I'm even more proud now to be going after bigger targets of opportunity. And, you know, dude, look out, Hollywood. I'm fucking coming, bro. I'm coming. Like, whether you, like you, you better hold the door with 400 people because I'm coming through it whether you let me in or not. So, but again, I'm grateful for all of it, man. But there's more to do, bro. And you got more also. Yeah. It's, a, it's an amazing thing to have, to create. It's not, uh, you know, and people are negative. I don't have opportunity. No, you create them. Create your opportunities. The more you put out into the universe, the more opportunities are going to come back at you. But you got to put it out there. You know what I mean? Just it's your mindset. Be in that positive state of mind. And you have a positive mindset. Even though you were burnt out, you still live in a positive frame. I can feel that. When we first WhatsApped and I was in the dojo doing Kempo, and I'm like, bro, I love your channel. And you're like, dude, your bio's awesome. Like, right? <laughs> that energy? That's sure. everything, man. And we're both grateful, right? Yeah, 100%. What were you going to ask me? Yeah, so I'll just add a couple of thoughts. Before I do that, now I'm certain. I thought I had a feeling you're reading body language. So when you see me looking at the site, I'm sometimes scanning the comments or writing I know, down. I know. I, went, yeah. I know your computer. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So uh, again, when I, whenever maybe I, I just said that to get you to be self aware about your body language. It's more like that's like step bro. Um, so I, yeah, whenever I listen to someone, I always try to relate and see if I ever had something similar. And, and I do, I, I relate there. I had a period in my life, again, not the same scales, but, but there's, uh, there's similarity. 
but it's all relative to to our to to our threshold. So there there is no difference. It's all the same. Mm. So I was running my keto day the other day uh, back in the day, and uh, I was also side hustling with my YouTube channel, but I was burning myself out because the dojo demanded so much energy. I was already getting disillusioned with Aikido. And and the channel was needed more attention, I, but I was still still kind of doing it. But then one day I asked myself, like I realized I'm not, I used to be super happy running my dojo. That was my dream. But after like five years, I started to feel like it's not really giving me joy. And I thought, you know, I turn into a dojo. I grind every day. If I If I injure myself, everyone drops out, my business fails, like I always have to keep repeating the same stuff. And I think some people love it, but I, I felt like I, I want more. And then I thought if I would take the same amount of energy from my dojo and invest it into YouTube, that like that would blow up. I could reach so many more people and I would enjoy it more. And people, and people told me like, including my ex-partner, she said like, oh, you're crazy. You're not going to make it on YouTube. And, and I was like, Watch me. <laughs> so, hey, dude, isn't that the, but okay, awesome yeah. story mm. and agree with you a thousand percent. But it's amazing how the person closest to you was the one who tried to shut you down. My ex. <laughs> that's, 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 and, and it's a good thing you're not with her because you dodged a bullet. Because yeah. if the person you're not with doesn't support every piece of what you want, listen, 99% of success is failing. You have to fail to know what works and what doesn't work. And for you people out there blah, 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 with the comments, try shit because you don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. You only have to be right once, dude. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad you're not with her. Gone. YouTube, who would have thought Google would have bought YouTube and the algorithm would be so intense and so spot on and the universe electronically would be able to turn a kid from Lithuania burning out in a dojo after five years into a YouTube celebrity who, who knows where you're going to go. You don't know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the thing, man. It, most people don't have the ability to be able to at least put it out there and try. And so good for you for trying. That's – most people won't do it. And so therefore – that's one of your gifts, bro. It's one of your talents is mm. you're following your instinct. Mm. You keep following it, dude. You're going to like, I'm excited to see where you'll wind up because it's going to be totally different in five years. Watch. I, I think I think you're right. I mean, hosting, it's hosting the fucking MTV Awards in Spain. <laughs> oh, in I don't know how to say your last name, but you never know. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you mentioned that a couple of times of not knowing where we're going to be. And there's a quick funny story there. Uh, so my brother, who's four years older than me, he used to live like a nine to five job, studied, like did the whole regular life thing. And I was like, the, the freak is going to go to Thailand, live in a small island and be happy. They're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. My brother, no way. Now it just switched. It's the opposite. It's like, you never know. It's just you never, you never, never know. You never know. That, that, just keep putting shit out there. Just keep creating, keep developing, keep promoting keep not listening to the negativity. You just don't know, man. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, here's one of the things I believe, bro, because I believe that there's nothing that we can't do. That there's no job that's too complicated that can't be learned, period. I, there's nothing you can't do. In fact, I think 95% of the businesses out there are full of shit. 95% of the high paid executive jobs are full of shit. There's nothing you can't learn. If you want to learn it, you'll figure it out. And it's just, it just it's just belief man like you know what i mean like everybody wants to going back to the to the part about selling the company and wanting to go into hollywood i was like dude it, it's got to be now bro if you want to like you're just as good of an actor as anybody out there there's a movie called 211 you can see me on on uh netflix got a pretty big scene with nick cage who's an oscar winner and I got to do a fucking scene with him, a four-page fucking scene. And him and I are fucking riffing and freestyling. I had the time of my life. I go, why wouldn't I want to do this? And I go, Nick, you were pretty good, by the way. Not bad. He looked at me. Ha, ha, and he laughed. You know what I mean? Because I'm having fun with it. And at the end of the day, just don't give a fuck. Just run into the blaze. You'll figure it out afterwards. Another thing I learned in Israel. Always say yes. Figure it out later. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyone who says, can you do it? Say, yeah, of course I can do it. And then figure it out later. Always yeah. say yes. Solve it afterwards on the back end. Yeah.
Yeah, I think so many things you're saying are so great, and I'm happy you know people are listening into this. This is so much bigger than you know some. It's just... a lot bigger than a keto, bro. It's a lot bigger than. Well, that's one of the things yeah. I was thinking about. Like, how can we talk about stuff to advance both of our goals? You know what I mean? What can I bring you that you haven't thought about, or what can I bring you to try and relate to on? And uh, I just think it's bigger than a keto. And by the way, for your keto people out there, I love a keto. I think it looks awesome, but it's fucking it doesn't work. But you can make it work. How do you make a keto work, Rokas? Have you figured it out? I have ideas. I didn't figure it out. <laughs> All right, well, here, I'll give you some more pieces. Add yeah, some okay. strikes to it. Hmm. Add striking. Because when you add the striking to any attack, it changes the psychology of the attack. Hmm. That's part one. Part two, you have to practice it at speed. It's got to be done at a real pace. Mm. add those pieces your keto will become more functional mm. what would oh and i don't like the word oh sensei it's a little too arrogant for me what would um i hated that i don't like it i never liked it what would ueshiba have said about the current situation of a keto today you think what do you think he would have said i think he wouldn't be happy you know there there's a story of him walking down with his top students and one of his top students tell it years after and Osensei, Osensei, Yoshiba says to them, says, people are, I, I see people walking next to me, but when I turn back, there's no one. Like, so he basically meant, like, even back then, he, people weren't really, like, following his vision. So I think today he would be very sad, honestly. Do you think that he would have been disappointed that Akito hasn't evolved into a more functional martial art? I think so. I, I think, think he so, would've... too. I think he would have fucking laughed at this whole thing and said, why are you following... The shit I was doing in 1948 and look at the television and what's working and what's not working. Yeah. Like, I don't care what anyone says, man. MMA works. Yeah. You know, it's going to work. So I think he would have evolved it. And I think that the Aikido community, and I like work on these blogs and stuff like that. And I can hear them like, it's like you said, it's the same argument every time. Hmm. Like, guys, just evolve it. It can be great. It can all be Greek. It can still look awesome or keep it traditional. I'll just keep stealing it and putting it in movies. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, maybe to, to put an extra positive note on it, I am starting to, that's one of my current journeys. You asked what I'm on and, yeah, yeah. and I'm not planning to make it my life's mission, although some people would want it, but I'm thinking about starting to dabble in looking, okay, so what would function like you don't look like? Who has hey, the best? I want you it? to call me when you do that. I will. I want to help anywhere I can. I'd love it. Because be there's 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 a lot of Aikido places who've been doing it for years, and there's some really good solutions to it. Um, so let me know when you start getting back into that, and I want to play with some of that stuff with you because mm. I was thinking about this also, man, and I wanted to say this to you. Don't throw away your Aikido. It's a mm. fucking awesome martial art. Don't expect yeah. it to work for you until you figure out how to make it work though. But once you have enough of that other stuff in there, with your MMA yeah. and your BJJ, yeah. this but, works by the way. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 I agree. I agree with you. I mean, it's something I'm just discovering these days, but I think you're right. It's beforehand- I to Kube Tore on a grappler. You don't think that'll work? I'm not sure if I, maybe it's a different terminology from- What do they call the, what do they call the finger uh, wazes? Uh, Yubi Dori? Ubi Dori. All right, we yeah. get to Kube Tore. Same shit. All right, this is the different like versions of it. So yeah. you're telling me if someone comes in for a shoot and you grab those little fingers, it's not going to happen? Come on, dude. Just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, but I think, yeah, in, in the past there's, like I've been in a place where I had no combat experience, nothing, and it, I was the wrong person to try to make it you know, work. But these days I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm starting to learn. Well, we should stuff. do some firearms uh, training also. I'd love it. I'll yeah. teach you how to shoot. Um, Gung Fu too? <laughs> what's that? Gung Fu as well, maybe a yeah, little we bit. Can, of... Yeah, we'll do all that shit, dude. Yeah. Well, I've got a ton of shooting ranges out here. So when you come to LA, we're going to do some gun jitsu with you. We'll do some firing. Have you shot guns before? A little bit, like insignificant amount. It's, I, all right. say. Well, let's let's do that. That's a good video, man. I'd love it. I'd you love know it. what I mean? Why Aikido, is, why Aikido doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a good name. You should. Start making some good YouTube videos with these good. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna do it with you, bro. We're just gonna we'll just we'll just broke it. We'll keep it on the Rokas channel. 
<laughs> Anyways, man, this is awesome. Do we want to? Um, yeah. Do you have any other questions for me? Because I, okay. I think you're fascinating, man, and I, and I know you're interviewing me, and and I just a lot of people, like I said, relate to you because you've been burned by these mystical morons, and and I've been around some cults, but I've also like this Kempo guy. Joey Cadena, again, this, let me plug it again. The Universal Kempo Karate Studios. I call him coach. He's an eighth degree. The guy's been doing this shit for 35, 40 years. He's my age. He's probably 45, 46, 47. But he's a coach. It, 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 there's no senseis. There's no shihans. There's like, get out of here with that shit. Do you know what I'm saying? My, my, my instructors in Miami, who I just flew to a couple months ago to do my show on, just because I wanted to get my Aikido really, really dialed in. They're coaches, you know, and he's a tent down in like three different systems. And it's a little like, almost seems a little too much, but it's, it's like the real deal. Cause he's been doing this for almost 50 years. Mm. And there's good instructors out there. Like you don't like any of these guys, when they start getting the culty with their fucking angles, like get the fuck out of here with that. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's important what you've been peeling away. And I, and, and I think a lot of people are with you on that right now. So, but I also think though, Rokas, that traditional martial arts are coming back. Okay. And I think there's something cool about that. And I don't mm. know if it's just me because I'm doing it in Hollywood and because I like the way the stuff looks. Mm. But at the end of the day, you notice a shift in MMA also when you watch the UFC. You see some different pieces starting to evolve as the UFC evolves. Yes. And so it's like, less grappling there's more kicking there's a little more striking now you'll see some elbows and you're just like whoa wait a second i thought that shit doesn't work but it just depends on what's the fad in mm -hmm. that period of time that we're watching right now so i think there'll be a traditional recirculation cobra kai i'm trying busting my ass to get on that show i'm trying so hard <laughs> I'll be i'm awesome. trying so hard i've got calls out to everybody man i'm like crashing every door the stunt coordinator and the thing and the uh, the producers. I just messaged them and I've got my agent reaching out. Like I'm trying from every direction. I just don't know where a 45 year old, fucking hair thinning, Aiki Jitsu Kempo blue belt. I don't know where I'm gonna fit on the crowd in the Cobra. I don't know if there's a place for me, but if there okay. is, I promise I'll get on the show. Nice. You know, you mentioned Cobra Kai and, and you mentioned Nathan Levy. Uh, and we were, you, you know him, right? Nothing. Yeah, I watched his video to get a sense of your show, and okay. he seems like a very sweet, yeah, he's humble, nice, humble dude, man. I liked him a lot, yeah. And and he was telling that he was he he stopped teaching karate, but he was watching Cobra Kai the third season, and he started to feel that hunger again of wanting yeah. to come back and teach. And and I had the same thing, like he, good. I had nothing like that, but I was watching Cobra Kai. I was like. Yeah, I kind of missed running a dojo a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit, a little bit. You know, it's interesting because I I train it's my training is really selfish though. You know, like training to be a teacher, I'm a good instructor and I've been teaching for a long time. So in addition to having the bodyguard company, I've been training law enforcement and military units for the same 15 years. So I had the training side of my company and then the bodyguarding side. And on my website, if you guys go there, you'll see I've got a whole platform of training courses that I offer, but I sort of phased out of that whole thing and I just put everything online and made it digital because I believe it works. Like you can learn online if you have a certain level of training already. Um, but I train like selfishly, man. Like, like I really, when I teach people and I train, it's to get my hands on someone so I can get better. <laughs> so I almost teach for free now. So even when I've got actors and stunt guys who want to work out with me, like I don't charge money. I have a whole home dojo that's really gorgeous and matted out. You saw it when I called you, like perfect little 500 square foot space here. And mm. not COVID right now, obviously, but I train to get myself better because my focus is on the acting. And the, the, all the choreography and all that other stuff is just like, that's just bridging for me to be able to truthfully, I just want to choreograph my own shit. You know what I mean? I just want to make my own stuff. So um, teaching is, is hard though. And running a dojo, it's a, big responsibility man and you've yeah. got people depending on you and how long did you have your dojo seven years uh, enough. And you're scratching a living and you get a, every month you're charging and you gotta like it's, it's a lot right yeah and you're teaching twice a day and 
oh yeah, like, you know, and there's like people like my students were saying, oh, you live a good life. You just come and teach and that's it. And it's like, no way, you know, you have to pay the bills. You have to clean the, the dojo. You have to take the your lights home. on. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's just like, you know, wow, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. well, anyways, man. Um, I'll ask you a question or unless you yeah. want to jump. No, you go, you ask me. What else? Did, did we yeah. cover everything from the list? I remember we had a little list. Yeah, yeah, we're, we, we did pretty good with the list. There's one thing uh, still missing mm -hmm. and then we can open up for questions. Um, a talk on the Netflix series. Area. Oh yeah, let me tell you. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing that up. So, uh, guys, so I, um, as you know, I'm an actor, and um, one of the reasons, uh, well, I reached out to Rokus because I just like his channel, and I think that there's a there's a there's a very truth seeking quality to him. But I was in a I just love a keto and I like watch. I don't even like watching your old keto videos, man. I like, <laughs> I like watching your feather falls. I'm like, mm. I just think you're a great Aiki, like Aiki Doka, mm. which is why I don't throw that away because we're going to call on you for that at some point. So just know that. Um, mm -hmm. But as the acting journey has continued, I'm, I, I wanted, I'm super excited to announce that. Um, and my, and, and Netflix is, very careful with me about what I talk about. So I have to do, I have to do this very carefully because they're going to watch this and I'm either going to get a cease and desist letter or a lawsuit letter or no, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, but I have to just have to be careful the way I do it. So um, I am going to be uh, uh, co-starring um, or excuse me, I'm, I'm in a recurring guest starring role, which means I'm going to be on multiple episodes of the largest Netflix series in all of Latin America. And the show is called Luis Miguel. And Luis Miguel is a real famous, the most famous singer, pop star in the history of Latin America, specifically Mexico. He's still alive. And it's a scripted series based on his life. And it stars Diego Bonetta, who's an amazing Mexican actor, Mexican-American actor. The guy's a badass. And um, I can't tell you what I play on the show or what my story is, but I'm going to be guest starring in a recurring role on the Netflix series Luis Miguel. Um, season two is going to be premiering April 18th. And if you're interested in knowing what Luis Miguel's connection is to me, it's going to be <laughs> awesome. I can't tell you what it is, but, uh, tune in on Netflix. Um, the, it's, it's, I know that there's a monster martial arts community in South America, mm. both in Aikido in mm. karate, in jujitsu. So I don't know. I, I'm sure you've got fans all over the world. Luis Miguel, La Serie, April 18th on Netflix. Um, it's an awesome show. Um, it, I don't know if uh, you guys like the foreign stuff. I love it. And uh, I read for this thing and auditioned for this thing a year and a half ago. Started filming it in Mexico in February at the peak of COVID. <laughs> and now it's finally coming out. They wrap shooting the second season. So uh, nice. please tune in and watch it. And uh, Luis Miguel, the series on Netflix. You can watch season one now. The all yeah. 10 episodes are streaming on Netflix. And it's an awesome show. It's really good. Very cool. It'll be really cool to see you there. I was like, oh, I know this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch. You're, no, you're going to like it, bro. You're going to like it. It's really good. Yeah. There's no there's no Aikido, but it's pretty good. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see what your role is going to be in it. But I'll, it's gonna, I'll yeah, yeah, it's gonna. I, I'm, I hope it doesn't suck. I hope it's. I hope it's as good as I remember it because I haven't seen the cut version of it. So, uh, yeah. uh, fingers crossed, man. 